Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Hu and I am a physics teacher. In this video, I am going to go through with you the concept of resolution of forces. Now, the concept of resolution of forces is actually quite simple to understand. You can think of it as being the opposite of resultant forces. Now, if you have no idea what resultant forces are, check out my video on resultant forces first because you're going to need to understand that topic before you're able to understand resolution of forces. So we already know that resultant forces is the single force that represents the vector sum of all forces acting on that object. Now let's do a review of resultant forces first. So if we have an object which has two forces acting perpendicular to each other, let's have a force this way and a force this way, we already know that the resultant force of these two forces are acting let me use this color. Okay, it's going to act in between. And we can use either the parallelogram method or the triangle method to solve this question. However, because I like to talk about resolution of forces, I'm going to focus on a triangle method instead. So I'm going to clear this first, and let's talk about resultant forces using the triangle method. So we have a single force acting to the right, and then another force acting perpendicular this way, we know the resultant force is from start to end, like so. Now, force resolution, you can think of it as being the opposite to the situation, which means that you have a force given to you acting at an angle this time. Let's put this color green. And what you need to do is you need to find the horizontal and vertical components of these forces. That means from this force, you are going to create a force this way and a force this way. Now, this is the horizontal component. And because it's parallel to the x-axis, we very often call this fx, of course, provided that this is f. And because this vertical component is parallel to the y-axis, we would call this fy. So how do we resolve the forces? It's quite simple. You need to just use your trigonometric functions of sine, cos, and tangent. And let me show you. So if you have a force acting this way at an angle, I'm going to label this as F. And this is theta. When you resolve force F, you're actually creating a right angle triangle. So I'm going to use different colors here so that it's easier for you to be able to follow the lesson. So I'm going to put this as blue. And let's make the vertical component a different color. My other option here is red, so let's use red. Now, using your understanding of sine, cos, and tangent, and let's take a look. So this is your angle, so which means that this is your hypotenuse, this is your adjacent, and this is your opposite. So if you look at the situation, normally the values given to you are f and theta, which is the hypotenuse and the angle. You will not have the adjacent and opposite because you're supposed to work it out. So if we look at sine, sine theta is what? Opposite over hypotenuse, correct? Our opposite in this case is Fy, and our hypotenuse is F, which means that if you want to calculate Fy, you look this up, you'll get F times sine theta equals to Fy, and that's how you solve Fy. Fy is actually F sine theta. If you use cos, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, correct? So that means this will be fx over f. You bring this up, you'll get f cos theta equals to fx. And that means fx is equal to f cos theta. This is how you work out the values of fx and fy. If it helps, you can actually memorize this, although I would recommend that it's probably better not to memorize, but instead understand how you work it out. By understanding how this is obtained, you never need to memorize the formula. Now, some students do wonder, what is the purpose of resolving forces? Let me show you. Sometimes you may get a situation where a force acting on an object in such a way that makes it move not in the direction of the force, but in another direction. Let me show you what I mean. Now, say for example, you have a very basic situation like this. So you have a force acting on an object this way. 
Imagine that this is a smooth surface. So let's keep it smooth so that it's easier to um, follow the example, right? So if you pull an object, logically, the object will follow the direction of the force applied, correct? So if you're pulling the object to the right, the object will move to the right. Like obviously, you know, you're not going to pull the object to the right and suddenly moves magically to the left. That's not going to happen. However, you may come across situations where the force is not acting in the direction of its motion. You may have a situation where the force is acting at an angle, perhaps like so. I'm going to put numbers in here so that you can uh, visualize better. So let's say this is 60 degrees and let's say this is 10 Newton force. So 60 degrees from the horizontal. Now you could be pulling the object at this angle, but you might find that the object is actually moving to the right and not following the line of force. The question could be asking you to calculate the acceleration in this direction. If you use the formula F equals MA, you cannot do this. Let's say, for example, the mass is given as uh, 2 kilograms. You cannot just put the value of the force of 10 Newton inside here. This is not correct. Why? Because the force line of 10 is not in the same direction as the acceleration. One thing that you must remember is that when you use formulas which involve vectors, all the vector quantities in that formula must be parallel and in the same direction. So when you look at this formula, which are the vector quantities? That's right, force and acceleration. Mass is scalar, so you can uh, ignore because there's no direction to even take note in the first place. But for the other two, yes, force is a vector and so is acceleration. That means when you apply the formula, force and acceleration must be in the same direction. They're not in the same direction, right? So how do you solve this? You need to resolve the value of F to the horizontal component. Let's use, let's use blank. So you can resolve it this way with the vertical and horizontal components, but you don't need Fy. You just need Fx, which is parallel and in the same direction as A. So Fx is what you use to solve this question. And Fx, as we know, is F cos theta. So to solve this, you just put in the values like so. Work this out, you would get 2.5 meters per second squared. And this is why we need to learn how to resolve the forces to the horizontal and vertical component. In my next video, I will show you how to resolve forces for objects on an incline. I hope you have found this video educational and helpful. Don't forget to click like and hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and happy studying.